media and also some of the crit critics, right? But who else would have introduced into our conversation the 1%, the 99%, which everybody speaks to it now? I mean, absolutely. They, no, they it was really very successful in framing yeah. um, what, you know, some of the issues are, at least what some of the frustrations are. But I think, you know, it's time, if you, if you really want to see change, you got to get involved in politics. And I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all for protesting, but, you know, the change happens at the political level where you right. start figuring out how to push your aldermen to do something. Yeah, well, of course, we agree with that. And, and your congressional representatives and everybody else. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of pushing and things that we're probably for, uh, you had talked about the use of uh, marijuana, you know, stopping young black kids uh, as a way to control the population. Uh, I was reminded, as Katie talked about Abby Hoffman, when he actually lit up in here once and we had to cool him out. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and Mayor Daley, the former Mayor Daley, or the early, you know late mayor, not you know the earlier mayor. He uh, Richard, Richard no, I'm talking Boss. about the younger one. But he did talk Son. about the possibility of uh, decriminalizing marijuana, and I'm just wondering uh, what's the take on that? What's your sense about the possibility of that in the city? Uh, just throwing that in there. Yeah, well, all, as a Michigan uh, dude. Yes, as a Michigan <laughs> dude, where they have medical marijuana, although that's and everybody's now sick. <laughs> Every, that's right. I need, I'm so sick. I need the medical marijuana. Yeah, there's a whole lot of legal issues going on around that. But I mean, here, um, the there are a number of aldermen who are loyal to. I mean, you know. There are so many aldermen loyal to Mayor Emanuel, but a few of them, including folks like Danny Solis and Richard Mel, um, not exactly guys who are known for sticking their necks out if it's something that isn't doesn't have a chance of going somewhere. They have proposed an ordinance that would essentially move low-level possession of marijuana to a ticketable offense right. in the city limits, which, which yeah. is a great thing. Uh, is just a is sort of a baby step. I mean, I don't think let's not fool ourselves. This is. Even if they pass this, it's not going to exactly end the war on drugs or all That's the problems. Sure. And I have concerns about this being used as merely a revenue stream. Right. Then, then you turn and use the you know the black community just to start issuing tickets and right. and essentially it's another form of higher taxation, disparate form of higher taxation. Yeah. All that said, guys, at least it's on the table. People are talking about it, and I hope to do my small part to keep it on the front burner. Uh, Mick, let me ask you also, what's your take on the uh, superintendent of police? And his moves around gangs, a uh, new guy brought him in from New York. Well, Gary McCarthy is very personable. He's got extraordinary political skills himself. Really? I don't think it's a coincidence that when he first came here and first became the superintendent, you saw him all over the place. He was doing interviews, making public appearances, and then I Even know with Father Flager meeting with <laughs> Father Flager in a, a clip that was widely circulated on the internet and uh, inspired the ire of, uh, of the Republican of candidates. Republicans it made gun, me gun sort of like people. him. That's why I want to know a little more about him. I think. I mean, I think he's. I think he's respected and well liked although he's viewed in the within the, the the rank and file of the police department with a little bit of suspicion because they're sort of like well New York isn't Chicago there's a uh, police district map that has been circulating quietly with all the names instead of Chicago neighborhood names and it. it has New York neighborhood names on it just to sort of make a dig like all right this guy's gonna have to realize where Chicagoans he is. Chicagoans are so grown up exactly sometimes. and and then it's not a coincidence he's been a so little mature. He's been sort of quieted or muzzled in the last few months yeah. relative to his early days because I understand that the mayor is sort of like, this guy's got to learn to shut the F up once in a while too. <laughs> um, but all that said, he's a very smart guy. He knows, he knows politics and I think he knows policing. That doesn't mean I think he's going to do everything right. Um, politics in this town so often obviously outpaces smart policy. So, you know, we're going to have to see how this G NATO G8 thing is huge, both for Gary McCarthy and for Mayor Emanuel and for the president. I, I actually don't know why the president of the United States thought it was a good idea I, to have these I'm, summits in his hometown in, in an election year, but I think it's sort of like they, I don't know what's to be gained versus what could be, uh, what could hurt him out of that equation, but they're coming here and it's going to be exciting. I thought Andy Thayer, he was talking to a couple of people on, uh, you know, on the Channel 11 the other night uh, who work for the mayor's office and uh, they were just fluffing it up. This is good for Chicago. Why? They didn't ever give a reason why it's good for Chicago. I mean, it's clearly there's going to be some, some hassle in the streets. There's going to be some hassle in the streets, but first of all, you got the mentality of a mayor 
and, and a president as well, but certainly the mayor who is, uh, this is a good thing and a bad thing, but it's sort of like, well, what are a few pr protesters going to do? This is my city now. You know, I'm, I'm going to use this opportunity. Um, so I, I actually think he sort of knows that there are probably going to be some problems, but to some degree is discounting them as, as escalating into any sort of major event. This is something we can hand. We can get this done here in Chicago. That's the thinking. The other side of it is, yeah, I think that they do genuinely believe that this is a way to put a spotlight on Chicago. This is Rahm Emanuel's Olympics. Mayor Daley wanted the Olympics. Rahm Emanuel sees an opportunity to have another international event where all the cameras and the coverage are going to be here for a few days and he's going to be in the spotlight. Honestly, I'm torn as a Chicagoan. I, I'm, I'm always rooting for my town. For sure. And yeah, I feel I'm the same way. And, and then on the other hand, I'm, I'm also knowing that um, we're better to raise up the, the specter and the questions uh, affecting all of us globally vis-a-vis um, -vis these groups of white guys generally who traipse around the world you know saying you should be more austere here you should you should be more austere there here let, let's fix your currency you know uh, there somebody's got to raise these questions and there doesn't seem to be a, a built-in way okay to allow. we're out of time ah! Oh my we God. are out of town. Mick Dumkey, I want to thank Jeez. you for coming on the Live from the Heartland Sorry. show. Uh, you, will you promise to come back? Uh, yeah. Okay, whenever. this is Thanks, good. Guys. This is really I want to fun. thank both uh, Mick Dumkey and uh, David Schweikert, uh, our guests this morning. You can watch uh, these uh, interviews on youtube.com slash Heartland Media. We encourage you to do good in the world. The world needs all the good that you do. All, all power, power to, to the people. people. Over and out. Jeez, that's really, really fun. Totally.